First thing I want to talk about is this concept of value. Um, and one of the cool things about marketing is we create value. Um, this is, you probably heard marketing satisfy needs or need satisfying offering. This is the only time that I'm going to make a distinction between needs and wants. And in the real world, nobody makes a distinction between needs and wants. Everybody talks about needs, but what they're really talking about is wants. Um, and I think it's important to understand the distinction at this point, but again, if you go out in the real world and start talking about satisfying wants, people will think you're insane. Well, not insane, but they will think that you didn't study very hard in Marketing 431. Um, so a need is a perceived lack of something. It's a psychological state, the difference between a actual state and a desired state. So if I am hungry, what is my need? Say again? Can you speak louder? My ears aren't very good. Any food. Oh, man, you are good. <laughs> so any food. I need nutrition, right? Um, and um, some needs are stronger than others. If I'm hungry, I probably am going to want to eat in you know, at least a couple of days. Um, other needs are less important. Anybody here need to go to the dentist? Anybody has needed to go to the dentist for quite a while? Uh, hasn't become an emergency yet? <laughs> Still saving up for it? I, I can put that off. So again, I, I, there's, I, my teeth hurt, um, and I want them to not hurt, but it's not bad enough that I'm willing to go to a dentist yet. So again, different needs have different strengths. A want, on the other hand, is a need that's satisfied in the context of a culture. So I may be thirsty. My basic need is a lack of hydration. I need hydration. How do I go about satisfying that need? And I love it because there's a gentleman over here with a half gallon jug of generic water. Well, it's name brand water, but it's a half gallon jug. Um, when I want to satisfy my hydration, what do I do? I drink water, right? But do I drink water, water? Do I go to the drinking fountain? About purified water. Yeah, I will purified water. Better yet, water from Fiji. <laughs> because dihydrogen oxide from Fiji is far more nutritious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But again, um, so again, I could go to Lake Merced and I could stick in a straw. <laughs> that would satisfy the need, right? We might get some other things along with it. I could go to the drinking fountain. I could, you know, find a, ho a hose, um, get water from the hose. Um, I could get generic water in a bottle, or it w I could get brand name water. But why would I want brand name water? Why would anybody, is anybody here have Fiji water on them? <laughs> no, I keep it in the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> um, why would anybody drink Fiji water? It's better. It's better because. It's marketing. Uh, like alkaline water is better for you because the pH temperature. So it's better for you because it's got a better pH than distilled water, for example, or water that you would get from anywhere else. Okay, good. Yes. The bottle? The bottle looks nice, yes. Um, and that leads us to something that we're going to be talking about in this class a lot. I'm going to introduce it here, and I'm going to harp on it um, ad nauseum. And that is the concept of social consumption. And what social consumption is all about is that for many of the products, and some would argue most of the products in a consumer culture that we buy and that we use, the benefit is not so much in the product but the benefit is in others seeing us use the product. Um, this is why you rarely find people with Fiji water that hide it in their backpack. <laughs> it's it's you know, kind of sticking on the outside. Or, but again, is, is the utility from the water that we get is the, the hydration. And then above and beyond the hydration, there is some status, perhaps. There is some aspirational things going on. I can afford Fiji water, and you can't. That is an indication of wealth. 
Um, I have a better understanding of pH values than you do. That is a status of knowledge, which is important in our society. Um, and here, I love this. I, I, I understand that I need bottled water, but I'm, I'm efficient. I'm going to buy it in bulk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because compared to the free water, bottled water is a lot less expensive if you buy it in bulk. <laughs> But again, this is the idea that a need is hydration, but the want is how we choose to satisfy that need in the context of our society and our culture. And in a consumer culture, most of what we do as marketers is we're satisfying wants, not needs. Um, but so why have I gone through this? You need to understand the underlying need in order to make sure that people are going to buy the product. So if I'm going to sell Fiji water, I've got to make sure that Fiji water satisfies the hydration. Because um, if the Fiji, Fiji water doesn't make you unthirsty, I don't care how colorful the label is. You could import it from Antarctica, which is even farther for the carbon footprint. And, <laughs> and it wouldn't make any difference. So you have to understand the underlying basic mode of the difference between where you are and where you want to be. And then you can craft a product that's going to be attractive given the social and cultural underpinnings surrounding that. And a lot of times, that is more social than utilitarian in purpose. Um, for example, who here wears clothes? Just about everybody? <laughs> OK. Why do you wear clothes? Say again? You don't want to get arrested? <laughs> Scaredy cat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 I mean, I'll be honest, I'm trying to hide something here. <laughs> I got to go double breasted in a minute because this isn't working anymore. <laughs> Get long ties. <laughs> um, but it's perfectly comfortable in here temperature wise. Are the clothes protecting us from the elements? Are the clothes protecting us from, you know, the, the environment, the, 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 the thorns in the chairs? Um, so in addition to not getting arrested, we don't want to appear foolish, right? And not appearing foolish is a huge motivation for humans. So again, clothes you would think about is a utilitarian purchase, but in reality, most of what we do with clothing is social consumption. Um, we carefully choose the clothes that we wear because people make assumptions about us based on the clothes that we wear, and we make assumptions about ourselves based on the clothes that we wear. We'll talk about that more when we talk about branding. So the point is, in the real world, you're going to hear you know, people talking about satisfying needs, and what they really are is understanding there's an underlying need, but the product that we're developing is something that is shaped by the, the, socia, the social structure and the culture in which we're in, and there's probably going to be a social consumption element to it, which also adds value, because we talked about not being embarrassed is an, a huge motivator in, our in any society. I don't know any society where where not being embarrassed is important. Who here likes to look stupid? You know, other, than the, other than every professor on this campus. <laughs> I like it, too. Uh, so the other side of this coin is this also leads to ethical issues. Because we, as marketers, the underlying need may be basic, but the, the wants that we choose to satisfy, the, the ways that we choose them, um, may have ethical implications. And I have an example here. I don't know if you can see this. Um, when I saw this advertised for the first time, I just about freaked. Um, anybody here have uh, siblings? Any, anybody have siblings that are younger than you? OK, so you will understand what I'm talking about. This is a toy that is marketed to small children, the mobile spy ear. It's a remote-controlled car with a microphone and a camera. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Talk about blackmailing your allowance for the rest of your life. <laughs> um, is that something as in, that I would want my younger siblings to have in the house, given some of the activities that might happen while the parental units are away? <laughs> <laughs> and, and what are we encouraging, with again, with that toy, is we're saying that it's acceptable to spy on people without their permission, right? Because what other purpose is there for that toy? 
Um, you know, I can see, you know, perhaps being involved in a national intelligence network where we're protecting ourselves against foreign spies, um, but I'm not sure how many foreign spies are in my living room. <laughs> so again, um, wants versus needs, you have to understand the basic motivation that are causing people to act and then recognize that the actual products that they choose are going to be influenced by the culture, the society in which they live, and that may be an important part of the value, and it's true value. I mean, people pay a lot of money for designer clothes because they see the value in wearing designer clothes. Um, but you have some choices and you get to decide whether or not you want to sell uh, uh, really, really cool, sexy dress-up stuff for three-year-old girls. Uh, there's a market for it, but is that something that we want to do, is sexualize three-year-old children? Again, we have choices as marketers.